under Dragon Ball Sparking Zero couldn't live up to Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi 3. Hell, it can't even live up to Xenoverse 2. And you know why? Because in reality, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero isn't a sequel to Budokai Tenkaichi 3 because it's too busy being a mirror image to Demon Slayer the Hinikami Chronicles. And when you look at the history of both of these games, you're gonna see why that is. Now let's look at everything, right? Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, yeah, it had the big press, it had all the new outlets talking about it, a lot of commercials put behind it. It got the A tier marketing. Wish that other Dragon Ball games could get that. I mean, they've proven their success, but you know, when it came to Sparking Zero, they got all the bells and whistles. And when I think about other anime games it, that got a similar push, you know what came to mind? Demon Slayer the Hinikami Chronicles. They got the very same amount of marketing, the very same push that Dragon Ball Sparking Zero got. And when I look at what people glaze both of these games over, what do we hear about both of these games? Oh man, but visuals, visuals, oh my god, it looks visually stunning, oh my god, you can't get better visuals than Demon Slayer the Hinikami Chronicles. Oh my god, you can't get better visuals than Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. You know, you hear, you know, you hear the same thing there about both of these games. You know, mirror image, step for step, beat for beat, tick for tack, very same thing. And it doesn't stop there because all before the games actually came out, both games had the very same amount of defenders. People that were praising Demon Slayer the Hinikami Chronicles. People that are praising Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Not sustaining any amount of criticism for these properties, even though they are valid criticism. People that are fervent, adamant defenders and glazers of these games. And just like Demon Slayer the Hinikami Chronicles, I'm pretty sure that Dragon Ball Sparking Zero will get over half a million sales on the first week. There's no doubt in my mind it will get that. It can't get lower than that with the amount of marketing and pushing that it has. I mean, I'm going to press X to doubt and I'm going to beg to differ unless we see the number of returns for this game after its first week, but that's neither here nor there. Now, with all these similarities to Demon Slayer the Hinikami Chronicles, we can look at what happened after the fallout of Demon Slayer the Hinikami Chronicles. And let's think about everything, right? All before the game came out and during that little first honeymoon phase of Demon Slayer the Hinikami Chronicles, there was nothing but positive vibes, nothing but positive message push you know, positivity pumps all over the place, people blazing. But do you want to know what happened after that period of time, after the honeymoon phase, after the tangles went away, you know, after all these little females, grown ass men who act like little women over this stuff. You don't want to know what happened after that honeymoon phase and after the tangles left? Reality set in. People began to have no choice but to see the game for what it really was. A glorified, deified piece of trash. And I would venture to guess the very same thing is going to happen to Dragon Ball Sparking Zero if it hasn't happened already. We'll see after the first week. We will. And you know what we're going to hear after the honeymoon phase is worn off, after people get on rank and they get their just desserts, after those tingles go away, that little novelty of new wears off, we're going to hear exactly what we heard with Demon Slayer the Hinikami Chronicles. You know, even though people could see the gameplay and they did multiple demonstrations, multiple exhibitions for the game, people had to wait for some reason they couldn't use their pattern recognition, for some reason they couldn't use their common sense and see that the game was trash. You know, they had to waste their money then buy the game, then get online after they played the entire story mode. It never came up that the gameplay was trash. But when they got online and those losses started racking up, the honeymoon phase faded. Oh boy, you couldn't hear enough about water wheel spam, water wheel spam. Man, people playing this game like trash. This is the worst enemy game ever. I was like, wait, wait, what happened? What happened? 
Isn't this the game that you loved? Isn't this the game that was gonna be the best anime game of all time? And then when I look back at it, that game, it actually went over half a million. It sold 1.3 million within the first week, Demon Slayer, Tommy Chronicles did, right? But after that honeymoon phase ended, after they got online, after they tasted that water wheel spam, all that love, all that admiration, it faded fast. And now we can look at Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. We're still in those pre-release days, you know, early access, looking at the gameplay people drop online. I'm looking at my drop box, you know, I'm looking at the videos fill up and looking at what it's like online. And you want to know what I see? I already see early rumblings. It's not even day one yet. It's not even day one after release. We can already see all over Twitter, all over Reddit, all over GameFAQs, all over the internet. People who have gotten early access to this game, they're already turning on it. It's not even day one. It's not even week one. This game already fading. It's starting. I'm seeing it. Early access, day one. I'm already seeing people turn on this game. I'm already seeing people sour on this game. If it's not about Grade 8 Vegeta, it's about people who have already hopped on rank and they're already souring. <laughs> I'm already looking at these early access numbers of all these YouTube channels that were glazing this game to go in. If you want to know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing people already stagnate. They're already pulling the Steedos. Their numbers went right back now. All pre-release. All before early access. Their numbers, they went up a bit because, you know, they had the novelty of new. They had early access. But before early access could end, their numbers are already stagnating. They're already going back to what it was in Xenoverse 2 when the DLC isn't active. Hmm, I wonder why that is. I mean, what was wrong? Isn't Sparking Zero the big bad Dragon Ball game of all time? Or is it the pretender that I've said that it is? Isn't it the pretender to the title of sequel to Budokai Tenkaichi 3? It damn sure is a pretender to Xenoverse 2. The game has shattered all sales records, breaking into the tens of millions. I don't think Sparking Zero has what it takes. I think I'll, I'll give them this. I think they'll fool people initially. I think they might break a million in the first month. But what's going to happen after that is going to be the tale of the tape. See, if they don't concurrently get big amounts of players, if they don't concurrently maintain a healthy amount of sale, the game is going to fail. It doesn't matter how many people they can get out of the gate. Any anime game can get half a million in the first week, the first month. But the real tale of the tape is what can you do concurrent? What, you, what can you do month to month, week to week, to maintain those. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero Glazers want Sparking Zero to share the same rarefied air as Xenoverse 2, as Budokai Tenkaichi 3, as Raging Blast 2. It wants to share the pantheon of the great Dragon Ball games. It wants to sit atop the Mount Olympus that Xenoverse 2 has dominated. But Sparking Zero, it won't fall from grace because it hasn't achieved grace. It hasn't achieved greatness of which to fall from. It will be just like Demon Slayer Hinikami Chronicle. It will stay in mediocrity, glorified by a bunch of low IQ losers that can't make it in true fighting games. A bunch of low IQ losers that needed a new Dragon Ball game box to look at. I want Xenoverse 3. I hate that they're doing us a favor by making Xenoverse 2 DLC. 
It's made for low IQ goons that can't handle a combo cancel system, that can't handle advanced mechanics, that need a dumbed down, watered down, square, 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 square spam game like Sparky Zero, just to wax moronic amongst the meaningless commoners of the Dragon Ball games. I mean, I would say that Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is Xenoverse 2's lackey. But let's be honest, Sparking Zero isn't worthy of that great honor. It's Demon Slayer Hinikami Chronicles lackey. <laughs> the same mediocre games, the same trash-tastic gameplay, the same trash-tastic community, and the same mediocre fate that awaits Dragon Ball Sparking Zero that befell Demon Slayer the Hinikami Chronicle. Beautiful. Oh, black comedies often are beautiful. Ah, soak it up while you can, Sparking Zero. Your time is almost up. And the time is nigh for Xenoverse 2 and its new DLC. Enjoy going down that same path as the Hinikami Chronicles. Enjoy the fade into obscurity. The walk into oblivion where you fall into ashes. Where Sparking Zero falls to the annals of time, forgotten about. While Xenoverse 2 ascends again the precipice of greatness to bless us all with great Dragon Ball content yet again. The very same content that Sparking Zero just can't give us. Where's those other God of Destructions, by the way? Nah, right, that's right. They couldn't give you Champa. They couldn't give you Vados. And they for damn sure can't give you Belmod. <laughs> The clock is ticking. Xenoverse 2 Future Saga Chapter 2 is almost here. And it's about to strike midnight on your little Cinderella dream, Sparking Zero. It's all over. You might beat the game, especially a trash game like Sparking Zero, but nobody beats the end game of all games. Perfection, the natural selection. Hit that subscribe button, enable all notifications. Perfectionist, we out.